Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, this podcast is available for a limited time. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, before we start chatting anything, we've got an email that we need to read. So, we get an email from Christian. Christian writes, Hello, so I'm sure you've realized by now that the Zelda trilogy curse has struck again. You finally get to air the episode, and the day you do, the Mario 3D All-Stars is officially announced. Trailer drop and all, within a two-week release date. It's like they specifically looked at the format of your show, waited until you dropped an episode, and then dropped the trailer, probably around the exact same time. It's undeniable proof that Mr. Nintendo Man himself listens to Nintendo Cartridge Society. Christian, thank you for writing in with that. It's really hard to argue with. It's super hard to argue with. Uh, we are here today with a bonus episode, so we can discuss this thing without having to wait until Tuesday to do it. Um, Christian goes on then to also give us a uh, Mario memory. At the end of October, we are doing an episode dedicated to uh, our favorite Mario memories and all of your favorite Mario memories. So if you would like to share one of those with us for us to talk about, um, the deadline for that is like October 27th. Um, and all you got to do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at Gmail. G- Email.com. Uh, Mark, I was going to ask how you are, but I don't know if I care. I think we just need to jump into this and talk about this 35th anniversary Mario Direct. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, once again, Shadow dropped out of nowhere. No one knew this was coming. Uh, Mark, uh, w- we we were broken men before this, uh, believing that Nintendo had long since forsaken us, uh, and yet, uh, here it is. Here is uh, the Mario event that we had been expecting for so long, and then got sort of discouraged, and now it's here. Yeah, exactly, and it's uh, so much fun because this direct is a wild ride. There is stuff in here where I never saw it coming. Some of it's really cool. Yes. Some of it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I am uh, really excited to talk about it. But you're right. I do feel rejuvenated. And the fact that this Mario uh, direct still leaves open the huge question as to what is going on with Nintendo's like holiday season, it's just going to yes. give us more to talk about. Yeah, so I I think maybe we should just like hit some of the broad strokes here. Um, We are going to uh, talk about everything sort of in order and really get into like the nitty gritty of all of this because there's a lot of information out there that is both in the trailer uh, or that it's in the presentation and not in the presentation. But the sort of like, I would say the two, there are three big things, I think, that that came out of this. Um, The first uh, is that, of course, the 3D Mario All-Stars is real. It is coming out in two weeks um, on on the 18th. Uh, It includes uh, Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy. Um, So that's a big piece of news number one. Big piece of news number two is uh, Super Mario 3D World is, in fact, coming to Switch uh, in February. And then the last big piece of news i think is that uh super mario all-stars for the super nintendo is available on the snes switch online mark would you say those those are like the big takeaways yeah it's interesting i mean yeah i totally agree with the first two i'm not going to argue the third one i don't know that i would call it like an especially big like blockbuster piece of news but i'm not mad at it I, I'm I'm definitely not mad at it either. I, and actually, I am a little bit underwhelmed by that announcement, simply because all four of the games that are in Mario All Stars were already available on the NES Switch Online. Um, but you know, I also recognize that I'm a little bit older. I played the, at least not Lost Levels, but the other three games as they were released on NES. So the um, Mario All Stars versions of them are a little bit more foreign to me. Um, so I'm less excited. But I know a lot of people's first experience with those games were in that collection so um good at look there's joy enough to go around in this uh so let's all share it let's all spread it um mark uh, so overall are are you feeling good about this thing yeah i'm super excited i'm like i'm all in yeah 100 percent 
All right, cool. Uh, well, let's do this. Let's break down all 16 minutes of it. Um, not in uh, minute long increments, but just, you know, as, as seems appropriate. <laughs> Uh, the, the very first thing that was announced um, is, oh, so they, they uh, laid out the parameters here pretty clearly that this is the Super Mario Brothers 35th Anniversary Direct, um, and they are going to be featuring upcoming Mario games and products that will be out by spring 2021. Very specific parameters. You're not going to, there's not going to be a Smash Brothers character in here. <laughs> there's not going to be Metroid Prime 4. This is just Mario and just Mario for the next like six months or so. Um, so it kicks off with uh, maybe one of the weirder announcements. Uh, a game and watch featuring Super Mario Brothers. Um, this thing is wild. Uh, so it includes Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels, um, and uh, is is a game and watch. Mark, how do, how do you describe this thing? I, I'm a little bit at a loss for words. Yeah, it's like it's a game and watch with a modern LED screen that plays games that Game and Watch could never play. And also right. has to be larger than a stand, like a real game and watch, right? It's about ten centimeters wide or long, I guess, is how as how they express that dimension. So like, it's not tiny, but it's not huge either. Yeah, this one I don't like. I mean, I think it's like objectively cool, but I'm not like personally <laughs> excited for it. I don't, I don't, I don't really fully. I can't wrap my head around this one. Uh, yeah, th this one uh, has uh, so like the the color scheme feels very um, uh, Famicom mm -hmm. uh, to me. It's got that sort of like gold and red uh, sort of uh, c color scheme. Um, and like all the game and watches that came before it, it also can just be a clock. Um, but like the thing has normal like handheld battery life. So like it can run for eight hours and then like, we'll need to charge. So like, I don't really know in what world it can function as like a clock really. Um, but the clock feature, the clock functionality has, uh, they, they say 35 little touches to discover. So some sort of, you know, weird interactivity. Um, uh, and then there is also an updated version of the game and watch game ball, but with Mario's face instead of Mr. Game and watch. Um, I didn't realize that this was a, I suppose I should have because uh, game and watch is a character in smash brothers, but I didn't realize that this was a game and watch game. Um, I knew it primarily from the game boy camera oh, where you could put your uh -huh. own face in, in the place of that, of that ball guy. Um, but yeah, so this is just uh, Mario in there, and it's it says an updated version. I don't know if that means anything more than just it's Mario's face instead of Game yeah. of Watches. Um, so this thing's coming out November thirteenth uh, with pre order information quote coming soon. Mark, I have uh, refreshed this the website a couple times <laughs> to see when uh, we're going to get more information about pre orders. Uh, I'm growing impatient. I want that information now. I this thing's going to be fifty bucks, um, and I want it. I don't know why exactly <laughs> I want it, but I do. I mean, it is aesthetically really cool. Like I think what they're like trying to capture is the uh like uh the magic of like the snes mini and the nes mini like totally but i think like for me what's missing is one i don't have any nostalgia for the game and watch like i never owned one to my knowledge and like it's not something sure. that i particularly care about and two like the fun of that system to me was like oh it was a mini nes that actually plays nes games and this is like a Game and Watch that is maybe regular size Game and Watch or maybe bigger Game and Watch, which plays like games that a Game and Watch didn't play. I I don't know. I just, but also I, a game that a Game and Watch can play in in ball. You know, yeah. Like I don't really get it. I think it's aesthetically cool, but I I, I just don't fully understand this one. So here's here's one place where I do think it would be like one use case where I think it would be just tremendously cool is to have it plugged in on your desk functioning as just like a clock mm -hmm. and then every now and then you pick it up and play Super Mario Brothers with it like that sounds so rad to me. Um they one of the things that they expressed about this is that it has uh quote plus uh, it, this is so weird. Quote, plus pad included so you can play the game smoothly. They refer to the D-pad as a plus pad. Is yeah, that wild that or is what? Interesting. Maybe that's what it was called on the Game and Watch. 
Ugh. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, so anyway, this thing comes out in like a month and a half. Um, they uh, already said that it was uh, limited production. So this is certain, this is the beginning of a, a little bit of a theme here um, that, uh, you know, this is part of celebrating Mario's 35th anniversary. This is not a forever product. This is going to be around for the hardcore um, now if you're on top of it and all that. Um, and- so. And that's kind of like continuing again what we saw with the mini consoles, where like the the NES, especially when that was first announced, was like this is going to be limited, and it really was for a long time. Yeah, what's interesting is that like Nintendo sort of changed direction on that eventually and started making more of them. I don't know if it ever got to the place where it was like, you know, you could always count on going into a store and finding like a stock of them there. Um, but I think it generally got to the place where uh anyone who wanted one was able to buy it yeah if you were Um, like actively looking of course like it was still limited because i don't think they have continued to manufacture them i think they like right correct yeah yeah well and the the other thing that uh, is interesting about this to me is that it seems so close to being a Game Boy Advance Classic Edition, like it is, all it's two shoulder buttons and like a vast library away <laughs> from being, uh, you know, a a an amazing machine. Um, and so like I I think this is this isn't them putting out like a piece of hardware that they think is going to like be a mainstay or be something real. Like this is a novelty piece of technology. Um, and I am interested in it as that. Next. Not a novelty. <laughs> Instead, one of the coolest things that was announced today, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Um, so the the base game here is Super Mario 3D World, um, which was originally available on the Wii U. Uh, one of my favorite Mario games is uh, coming to the Switch in February, February 12th, 2021. Um, so, you know, they showed like a, a two minute long trailer and most of the trailer was just showing uh, parts of the game that I have played now four or five times all the way through because I love it more than anything. Um, and then teased the new game mode or the new game add on, whatever it is called Bowser's Fury. Um, and it shows uh, like a big rainy open area with some sort of like obstacle course uh, trappings. Uh, everything has cat ears on it. Um, and uh, then like sort of in the middle of this wide open area is a cat Mario sitting in front of a bell. And that's it. That's all we know. Yeah, it's like a big, like, giant, like, bell shrine that seems to have, like, a, it's like, spiky bell, like, sitting on top, like, in encasing it. I don't know. It looks wild. I'm really excited for this one. I didn't own a Wii U, so I haven't played Super Mario 3D World except, like, at your house. Um, And so I am totally excited to finally be able to play this one. And I'm so curious to what like Bowser's Fury is going to be. Do you think it's gonna be like a a um super Mar- like Luigi World U type thing where it's like I mean like- I don't I don't I th- I uh, my my thinking right now is that it is uh going to be all Cat Mario that there is because you know Cat Mario t- traverses uh the the world quite differently than like regular Mario right, right. He climbs up walls um he's got that sort of like dive attack um which makes the game you know like the the limits of what Mario can do are very different from the limits of what Cat Mario can do so I think this looks to me like it is just going to be all cat because everything has cat ears on it the trees have cat ears on them the stone arches have cat ears on them um, the clouds like. The cloud, everything, everything has cat ears. Um, so I would, my current guess is that it is just a uh, a wide, either a wide open area or a, like a series of um, obstacle courses that are only Cat Mario. You can't not play it as a cat, is and my guess. It, immediately when I saw like the plus Bowser's Fury, it reminded me so much of the like Mario and Luigi remakes that we saw for 3DS, where it was like yeah. Mario and Luigi's Bowser Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. So it makes me, yeah, is it like a side story? Is it like a total, you know, I don't know. It, I, yeah. it has me really excited. I mean, what's what's so interesting is like, that's not really a favorable comparison because those, <laughs> um, those Bowser's Inside Story uh, plus like Bowser Jr.'s Minions or, you know, well, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever those, uh, those extra games are called, those are really not like they're they're full game experiences but they almost feel like mobile game experiences um and i don't 
I don't want to think that th- uh, that Nintendo would do that with this. Um, this does feel like it'll be more on the same scale as Luigi U. Um, it feels epic different. from like the trailer. Yeah. It feels like it. Uh, definitely more epic and mysterious than when we got those sort of like side stories for those other games. Yeah. Uh, when I showed uh, Sarah the trailer for this earlier today, uh, she was like, okay, so we should start replaying that game again now, and then in five months we'll want to play it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's what I I'm, was wondering because, you know, when we've talked about um, this game potentially coming to the Switch in the past, you had mentioned like, man, I've played this game so much. I have it on the Wii U. I don't know that I need to buy it again. Do you think like the... Um, the added pieces here, like Bowser's Fury and the fact that it'll be have local and online multiplayer, which will be brand new for this game. Do things like that, like, do you think you'll end up picking picking it up again? Or yeah. what do you No, yeah. I'm, I'm 100% I'm, I'm picking this game up. I mean, d- just them showing off that there is some other, like, gameplay mode, the the, the Bowser's Fury, for sure, is enough to, to do it for me. Um, I, I really do think that the uh, the online multiplayer thing is something that they buried in this. Um, like, it's sort of something that you have to uh, discover by, like, reading into, like, the, the additional notes about it. The original game had local multiplayer, which is an absolute blast. Mark, you've done it with, uh, mm-hmm. with Sarah and yeah. I, and also just with me. Um, and it's it's a, a wild fun time. The game is designed to be played with multiple people running around those maps at one time. It also wor- totally works single player. But um, the more people you have in it, the more fun you're going to have. Uh, and if I mean, I'm assuming that that's what online multiplayer means is that you could be in your house and I could be in my house and we could play this game together. Yeah, which is like I, I as with all co- couch co-op stuff, like I think you will lose a little bit of it. By going online, but I love having like that option. Yeah, uh, so a- absolutely wonderful. Also coming out alongside this are uh, Cat uh, Mario and Cat Peach Amiibo. Um, these were not part of the um, a part of the presentation, uh, but they were announced, you know, uh, within an hour of um, the the video going live. Uh, they look really good. They, these are handsome Amiibo. I'm absolutely gonna buy these. Um, <laughs> Am I a little bummed that there's no uh, Cat Luigi and Cat Toad Amiibo? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it would be nice to have all like four of those colors. Um, oh, it'd be so good. But I love the Cat Mario pose. It's classic Cat Mario. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, also the the shame about not having Cat Luigi is that Luigi's like a bad cat. Like <laughs> everyone else is like a nice, pretty cat with like you know nicely combed fur, and Luigi's like all patchy and green. <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> He's the Grizabella of the uh, Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, yes, I understand what you're saying enough to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next uh, introduced here was the uh, uh, a new game experience, Super Mario Brothers 35. This is wild to me. Like, of all the things in this uh, direct, I am like, this one, I can't wrap my head around. I love it. So it is basically Super Mario Brothers by way of Tetris 99, or Tetris 99 by way of Super Mario Brothers, um, where it is a online game where you are playing against 34 other people playing the original Super Mario Brothers and every time you kill an enemy it goes into someone else's game and attacks them uh, and it's just a race to see who lives the longest and who yeah. gets the most coins and uh, it seems like absolutely chaotic you know li- 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 much like Tetris 99 um, where like there are times you're that you're going to play this thing and be knocked out in the first like two <laughs> seconds um, no th- this is very exciting um this is a game that, uh, so just to run, run through the other stats here, um, this is uh, exclusive to uh, people who subscribe uh, to Nintendo Switch online. It is available October 1st uh, and is playable playable until 331 2021, uh, which means that it, it is a limited time game. This is not something that they're going to be uh, having up on the Switch online service forever. Um which you know again this is the uh the limited time that we are uh celebrating Mario's 35th anniversary it does feel a little like if the game is fun like why why can't we keep it you know what i mean yeah and i yeah i totally get that i think you know uh you mentioned with the game and watch we'll get to it when we talk about the 3D all-stars collection like there's a number of things in here that are only available 
right? They're saying that they're only going to be available for a limited time. And that has some people upset. I get it that like, yeah, it is artificial scarcity. Like Nintendo is arbitrarily saying like, yes, if you want to participate in this, you have to do it now. It doesn't bother me that much. Like, I think it really, to me, part of the fun of sometimes with these sort of things is like the fact that it is like, yeah, if you want to experience this, we're all going to experience it together and you have to get in now. Like, and for Nintendo, from like a business perspective, it's like, yeah, it's just another incentive to get people to sign up or maintain their Nintendo Switch Online subscription. Because if you want to participate, you're only, you can't say like, oh yeah, in a year, I'll do it then and then I'll just be able to catch up then. It's like, no, if you want to participate, like you have to do it now. Yeah, do it now. It's like the fun of like Breath of the Wild, right? Which was like, so many people were playing it together. And so you were like, wow, we're all experiencing this same thing. And so I, like, I, I do understand why it's like, why would they take it away? There's no reason to, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm kind of okay with it not existing forever. So th- this one, I'm I'm actually also like very okay with it being a, a limited time thing. It is something that is just being added to Nintendo Switch Online. Like if you're subscribing already, then you will have access to it. And I think there is, you know, every time that they've, they launched that thing with just the um, NES uh, Switch Online, right? Like that was the only thing uh, that was there in addition to being able to play games online. And they said, okay, so that's 20 bucks for the year. Since then, they've doubled the number of games on there. They've added this uh, Super NES Switch Online uh, and also g- given us uh, Tetris 99. And the price stays the same, right? So like there has to be a point at which they're like, okay, you can't have everything you know, like if, if they were to keep uh, putting games like this on the service um, and it still stays the same price, like there's a point where that doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, and also just like the idea that this is available for a limited time makes me think that the sky is the limit as far as these like online uh, like Battle Royale classic games go. Um, you know, if we get like a, a Zelda 35 next year, um, even just for a couple months or like some sort of uh, Kirby Battle Royale, it, like, you know what I mean? Like there, I think this opens it up to there being, um, you know, more opportunities for fun stuff like this. Yeah. Uh. Also, October 1st is it feels so far away right now. I just I just <laughs> want to play this game right now. It feels fun. Uh next is the one is the announcement I truly could not wrap my mind around. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. This looks so cool. So what it is is like a RC like cart um with different Mar- like different carts for different Mario characters. And then the you control them like the controller for it is your switch and then yes. each rc car has a camera on it and so you're looking at the switch you are um seeing it like zoom around your house and there's also like ar capability so it is like uh building the world of mario kart in your home as you're driving it around yeah so it like and it, the the set comes with um, you know, four different like gates that you can drive through to sort of like, uh, you know, es- establish the the track in in your home, which is so weird. Um, but yeah, like when you're playing, there are other racers on the track that I, I think in the demonstration they showed were just the Koopa kids, which is <laughs> <laughs> which is cool. Uh, I, I I like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, this thing comes uh, in two different varieties: the Mario version and the Luigi version. Those are the only two racers that like you can play as. Um, and uh, each set is a hundred bucks, um, and you can play up to four players. Um, but everyone, of course, needs their own cart and their own Switch. So uh, to, to get like a four-player game of uh, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, uh, you're going to be sinking like a grand at least. <laughs> Um, but it seems uh, super cool. This feels like um, the promise of Labo uh, yes. delivered. That they took all of those like uh, neat ideas and like integrating things in, into the real world. Um, this is something that I I feel like there's no way uh, I'm ever gonna live in a totally. place where there's enough space to do it. Yep. 
Um, I was saying that we should uh, we should take over some closed mo- closed down movie theaters uh, and uh, just have Mario Kart races inside them. <laughs> it's like a modern slot car racing. I yeah. I love this idea. I think it's such a cool combination of like Nintendo's history as a toy manufacturer and mm-hmm. like as a video game company. Um, it also okay. So this is maybe just like a wild idea that has no basis in reality. But one of the, one of the rides that is coming to uh, Universal Studios in Japan and then Hollywood and eventually wherever they build these like Super Nintendo worlds is a Mario Kart ride. And I don't think it's been officially announced, but like the leaks and all of the rumors are that it includes uh, some sort of AR cap- capability. So basically, you'll be given yeah. like AR glasses, and as you're going through the ride, like that's uh, the augmented reality will like enhance the experience. And I, they have also talked about like, uh, you know, like being able to have your experience at Super Nintendo World and then take that home with you. And by this time, Super Nintendo World in Japan was supposed to be open because of, uh, it was supposed to open in time for the yeah, 2020 for the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. And I am so I'm curious if like eventually there will be some sort of connectivity between the ride at Universal Studios and this experience at home. I, I, I mean, it would be cool if there was uh, some connection between them, but I could also just see it be uh, that they had developed this sort of technology um, with the ride. And we're like, you know what? It wouldn't be that hard to put these cameras inside a uh, an RC car and just like do this in someone's home. Yeah, totally. The other like we uh thing I was like, is this kind is this the Ring Fit Adventure for 2020? Like is it, it this like be. you know, like uh this like thing that comes out of nowhere that has like this peripheral that you have to have a switch for. And but this one I immediately see the appeal. If I was like ten year old Mark would die for this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and as would ten year old Patrick. Um, this thing is coming out soon, October sixteenth. Um, I'm surprised that this is uh was still a secret. Um, just because of all of like the physical production that would be involved with it. Um, but I guess like uh, they've been making uh remote control and like slot car um like Mario Karts for a while. So you know maybe uh, they were being made and you know no one uh, thought twice about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, hundred dollars. Okay. Um, then w- we sort of get into like the like nitty gritty. Here are the events and products that Nintendo is sort of uh, just doing across all of their games and platforms. Um, to celebrate Mario's 35th anniversary. First, they go into My Nintendo Missions. Um, and, you know, a lot of these are just like go to the Nintendo website and like participate with it in some way. Um. I, I did as many of them as you can do uh, at, at the moment. So I was able to do four of these six missions today. Um, if you just go to, uh, you know, my Nintendo and log in and check out the missions, you can knock them all out in like five minutes. Um, if you complete just one one mission, any of the missions, uh, you're, you can be entered into a sweepstakes where uh, there are uh, 10 prize packages uh, or two different prize packages, and they're giving away five of each. Uh, and each one, uh, you know, one has a normal switch in it, the other has a switch light. Um, and they both have uh, Mario Monopoly, Mario Jenga, and a hundred bucks in Nintendo eShop gift cards. So they're they're decent uh, uh, things to you know, and it'll take you a second to complete a mission. So go ahead and do that, and maybe you'll win something. Who knows? Um, and then uh, one of the prize packs, this is this is the exciting part of this, one of the uh, rewards, uh, not a prize pack, but one of the rewards for completing five missions is the 35th anniversary uh, pin set. So it's uh, like a Mario from all different Mario games uh, in like a cool enamel pin set. Um, the pins look really cool. So I was like, I want to get this. I'm going to start knocking out these missions now. Uh, turns out one of the missions that you do need to complete in order to be, in order to get this one is uh, buy Super Mario 3D All-Stars uh, <laughs> and register it. So, you know, they got your 60 bucks there. Uh, didn't, didn't they mention something about it? Like these pins being released in two waves? 
Oh, I don't know. Um, that that does actually sound right. Uh, so I, there there will be more missions that are posted as this thing goes. Um, so maybe like the second wave uh, is alongside um, Mario 3D World or or something along those lines. But yeah, this for for um, one half of them, one half of the pins, you gotta get Mario All Stars. Yeah, I I uh, I feel like we don't really get physical rewards from my Nintendo in the U.S. very often. These do look like a lot of fun. Um, hopefully they make a, like enough of them that, you know, like by participating, you have a pretty good chance of getting it because I do feel like with some of the stuff like the SNES controllers yeah. and like all that kind of stuff, it's always been a little bit of a mess and I'm hoping that's not the case here. Yeah. I mean, I, I think just having the sort of like hurdle of you have to do these missions, um, is going to turn off a lot of people, uh, you know, who just aren't, aren't going to futz around with that nonsense um one thing i did notice is that they said the the pins are limited um and obviously you need to buy super mario uh 3d all-stars um if people are buying that digitally or pre-ordering that digitally does that mean they've completed that task already because i i placed a pre-order for a physical version today but obviously i won't be able to register that with my nintendo until it comes out um, will the pins still be available at that time? Yeah, see, that's what I'm hoping. Like, you know, I hope that it's not one of those things where, like, uh, they're basically sold out before it even begins. Yeah. Um, sorry to talk so long about uh, my Nintendo missions. <laughs> this is truly the least interesting part of this presentation. Um, uh, then Mario Kart Tour is getting a Super Mario Kart event with special appearances by uh, 16-bit Mario and 16-bit Donkey Kong Jr. from the original uh, Super Mario Kart. Uh, adorable. Um, participation in that event, by the way, is a mission. So, you know, <laughs> play play in that when it starts. Uh, and it's September. So it's, I didn't write down the date, but it hasn't started just yet. Um, also, uh, there's 35th anniversary merch available at the Nintendo World Store in New York City and also online at uh, store.nintendo.com. Um, do, 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 do other things. Uh, a new Ninji course is being added to Super Mario Maker 2. That's uh, 35th anniversary themed that's coming out in November. Um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is doing an online tournament featuring Mario characters, stages, and items. That'll be later this year. Splatoon 2, Mark, is doing a Splatfest um, because the Splatfests are not going away. They're not going away, Nintendo. You can try to convince us that they are. We know they're not. Um, they're going to pit the Super Mushroom, the Super Size from a Super Mushroom room versus the invincibility from a superstar and that'll be january 2021 very excited for this love a new splat fest yeah uh love 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 a new splat fest there are going to be keychains for uh each team that are available on my nintendo as it get, as we get closer to the splat fest uh and then there are also physical splat fest t-shirts that have this like it's a really cool like mashup of you know the these mario graphics with the splatoon art style and it's got that sort of like sticker like tagging graffiti um aesthetic really really rad kind of tempted to get one of these shirts i like how they're available now yeah, or like soon, like now, instead man. of, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can start getting hyped for this Splatfest immediately. It's so funny. It's just a Splatfest. <laughs> um, Mark, what, what team are you? Are you team uh, Super Mushroom or team Superstar? Uh, super, uh, Superstar, for sure. Oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Mushroom. We're, <laughs> we're going to be uh, a podcast divided. Um, uh, next is there will be Super Mario themed furniture coming to Animal Crossing New Horizons in March. Um, which is cool. I wish it was now, but uh, that that that's cool. Um, and then more products. Uh, Puma is putting out a pair of Mario sixty four sneakers, which look dope. I sort of want these too. <laughs> I'm such a sucker. Um, Black Milk Clothing is uh, doing a line of Mario stuff. They are putting out a lookbook sometime in October. Um, and then they showed off a couple other products that we already know about slash already exist, like Super Mario Monopoly, Super Mario Jenga, um, a Jax 12-inch Mario doll, and the Lego Super Mario and Lego NES sets. Um, and that sort of closes out the sort of like Nintendo ephemera um mark is the, what 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 is the like what is the announcement from that chunk that that gets you going it's a splat fest the rest of it don't really care about you don't even like those pumas they look so good <laughs> 
Uh, okay, and then the the final two real announcements: uh, Super Mario All Stars is coming to the SNES Switch Online. It is available right now. So if you are already a, a Nintendo Switch Online uh, subscriber, you can just go in and play the original Super Mario All Stars. Mark, you were saying that doesn't really do much for you. No, no don't get me wrong. I uh, you said it was a bad announcement <laughs> that anyone who's excited about it should, I, I'm, should rethink like, that. I'm, I, I'm glad these games are on. Uh, I'm glad this game is on the SNES Switch Online. Um, you know, as a kid, when I was really young, we played the Nintendo version. But then once the Super Nintendo came out, we didn't like. I think we gave away or something our NES. Yeah. And so the way I played these games probably most is on the Super Nintendo. And so when the virtual console on the Wii and stuff started coming out, or when they were available on the Game Boy Advance, it was always a surprise to me to play the original NES versions, because in my yeah. head, so strongly were was the um, Super Mario All-Star version of these games. And so I think it'll be fun to be able, like, if you want now, it'll be super easy to compare, you know, the uh, All-Stars version with the originals yep. that are on the uh, NES Switch Online. Um, this is another one where, like, I, I turned it on and... Uh... Uh, Sarah was watching for a little bit, and then she was like, "Why does Mario look like that?" Um, I was just playing the original Super Mario Brothers, and I was like, "Oh, it's the Super Nintendo version." And like, it's it's it it is a neat slice of Nintendo history um, that uh, you know, like if you weren't paying attention during like a very specific period, um, yeah, this might seem weird, uh, but yeah, there there it's it's a good collection, totally worth playing. Uh, and then final, oh, uh, is this only available for a limited time, or is this? I don't think so. I think it's just thing. one of like okay. those like permanent editions. Well, permanent okay. in quotes because who knows how long the SNES Switch Online will last. It could disappear tomorrow. <laughs> um, I don't think it will. Uh, and then the final announcement, of course, uh, the confirmation of the thing that we've all been waiting for: the Super Mario 3D All Stars or 3D Super Mario All Stars. I've written Super it both Mario ways 3D All Stars. Okay. Uh, perfect. Um, uh, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, all boasting higher resolution than normal. Um, and then, uh, just a couple other things that they, um, uh, like kind of called out here as like other little improvements of the game. Um, there's a 16 by nine screen ratio for Super Mario Sunshine. Um, they don't mention, so I, I don't think it's available for 64 and they don't mention Galaxy because I think Galaxy was widescreen to begin with. Right. Uh, and then uh, Galaxy is, quote, compatible with two Joy-Con controllers, um, which is sort of what I would expect. I'm kind of more curious if it can be played without motion controls. It can. I saw that today. It can be played without motion controls. Very interesting. That feels like a special feature. <laughs> Um, also, there, this comes with a music player mode where you can listen to uh, all the music from all three games. Um, this is available September 18th, which, my God, is just two weeks away. Um, and there is a limited run of the retail edition. Um, and then uh, the digital edition is also limited in that it is only going to be on sale until March 2021. So I kind of, I feel like for me, this is the best possible version of what this rumor was going to be. Like, um, it's three games that I'm really excited to replay on modern hardware. Uh, I'm basically paying 20 bucks for each game, which to me is not unreasonable. Um, they are like... I, I don't know. That's pretty much all I wanted. I feel like the fact that it's coming out in just a couple of weeks, like it's not that it's a minor release, but I do kind of think they're treating it like it's like, this is not like the end all be all. This is like a yes. fun thing that we're putting together that like, if you want it, pick it up, you know, by the end of March, but it's not the anchor of our year. Yeah, uh, which, uh, you know, obviously begs the question of, okay, then what is the anchor of, of <laughs> right. the year? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the the fact that all of these games are being released mostly as is, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, this, this this is not a remake of Super Mario 64, which is something that, you know, was part of uh, the, the rumor for a little while. Um, and while, like, everything's coming out at, like, higher resolution, you know, nothing... Th these are basically... Um, like quick and dirty ports, right? It, it is a quick way to play these games on Switch. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad way to play them. I think it'll probably be a really good way to play them, but it's not as though 
you know, like I think this still, and especially having them as limited releases, this still leaves the door open for there being a Super Mario 64 remake in the future or a, you know, Mario Sunshine 2 or, you know, Galaxy 3 or whatever kind of stuff they want to do. I, I feel like this is, I, I, I understand the uh, limited availability uh, for this game being a point of frustration, uh, but if it is like truly, truly, a collection of these games from the past for you to play again and like remember Mario. Like that's what we're doing right now. Like that is what this moment is. Um, and it's not like here is something for your archives um, to have these uh, the best versions of these games, you know? Um, yeah. It's, it's a, a slightly different mentality. And I know that that is, can still be frustrating. Um, like I, I saw a, a lot of, um, not about the other two things that are uh, marked as limited, but uh, for 3D or 3D All Stars for sure, um, people wanting that to be available forever. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I'm, I totally get that. To me, it's not really any different from, you know, like uh, Mondo releasing limited edition posters or you know, like limited edition vinyl, where it's like you won't, they're not going to print them forever. Um, I mean, I am sympathetic, especially for people who like want to buy it di physically, because who knows, you know, like how widely available the physical version is going to be. Like that was something that I when was like debating because I normally buy all of my games digitally for Switch, but this one I ended up pre-ordering um, physically as well because you know I don't necessarily trust Nintendo to uh, let me play the games that I bought on my Switch digitally on whatever the next generation of you know nintendo hardware looks like sure, yeah. all of their e-shops have had pretty like hard end dates where it's like no like this exists on like a wii u or a 3ds and that's it like you're not like bringing that anywhere else versus like um like backwards compatibility with the heart with like uh you know like disc with physical media they've been pretty good about so i feel like if i want to be able to play these games in the future that buying it physically is my best chance at doing that. And so I can understand why people would be frustrated when like Nintendo doesn't have a great history of, you know, printing a lot of something when it's limited edition. That being said, it does just to me remind me of what they did for the 25th anniversary, which was they put uh, Super Mario All-Stars on a Wii disc and then they included like a CD in a little booklet and they charged 50 bucks for it. Um yeah. But the and, thing is, that's that's not a super attractive package. This is a pretty attractive package. Sure, but I mean, like, I bought the one, I bought the one for Wii, <laughs> you know, like, and the, and those yeah, games yeah, yeah. were already available on the virtual console. Totally, yeah. Um, for you know, like, I, yeah, I don't know. I uh, and the the interesting thing is that that collection, the Super Mario All Stars that they put out on Wii, that was a limited edition. It didn't, I don't think it had like a hard date. It was just like they printed a certain amount. And then yeah. in 2016, they put them on a disc for the Wii uh, as part of like the Nintendo Selects label. Oh, weird. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess two lessons, or one, one lesson to take from that and one observation. Uh, the one lesson being anything that is limited can come back. Um, but also, the uh, the thing that makes sense about that to me is that, like, you're putting a, we're only going to commit resources to manufacturing and shipping these things around the world for so long. That makes perfect sense to me, so I also totally get why the, um, the Game & Watch is a uh, limited release. The digital edition being uh, a limited time release that's that's the only part of this that rubs me a little bit the wrong way where it's like you you are doing that to create scarcity um or uh, yeah i i, I mean I, I don't know if you want the games like you got six months to, yeah like, scrape I, I feel like it's not bucks. to create scarcity it's to create like a sense of urgency i think yeah. is the in, is the intention but also like i kind of i feel like it's kind of a little bit like it's very clever. You could say fiendish because it's like, look, you're right. Like they are just putting these three games with, they had to do some work to make it, you know, uh, compatible with yeah. switch and with those controls, but see, obviously like they're not like full remakes. So they're putting like this on a disc for 60 bucks. And then, so, and they're saying 
they're treating it like this is a cool thing, but it's not the end all be all. But then by making it limited time, you're adding that sense of urgency. So people who would be like on the fence are like now going to be like, yep, I'm going to pick it up now. I mean, honestly, it and this doesn't, uh, I guess maybe isn't a good defense uh, that Nintendo has always done it. You know, you, you gave the example of uh, all stars on the Wii, but also like, it feels a little bit like, you know, the, um, uh, the discs that came with uh, your pre-order for Wind Waker on GameCube, which had uh, the entirety of Ocarina of Time and the Master Quest previously unavailable anywhere. Um, and you had to pre-order Wind Waker in order to get that disc. Um, so it felt like unique and special. They n- never re-released that package on GameCube. Right. Like it's a way to it's a way to play Ocarina of Time on GameCube. It's the exact same thing that we're talking about here. Um and like Ditto the maybe it's a little bit different, uh, but no, I'm taking it back, it's all the same. Um the uh 3DS Ambassador program. But right. there were 10, 10 uh Game Boy Advance and 10 NES games. Is that Something right? Like NES that. games? Somewhere. Weren't there also uh, like a couple of Super Nintendo games and it was like the only way that you could play them for a really long time? Mm, I, I don't think there were Super Nintendo games. There were for sure GBA games, which to date can still not be played. Oh, maybe it was GBA. On the, yeah. on the 3DS, um, which is wild. And it's some of the best 3DS games too. Um, so like that makes... Uh, that makes the people who are plugged into the Nintendo hardware at that time uh, and who spent the money to like be invested in it at that time have something special. Um, and like, you know, one of the things I like about Nintendo is that I get to feel like I'm engaging with something special. Sometimes it's a Mario game that's really awesome. Sometimes it's Breath of the Wild. And sometimes it's a collection of games that's only available for five months. Yeah, that for, you know, like the, the limited availability doesn't, like move me at all um i am very excited to play these games again you know i haven't had hardware of like mario super mario 64 the last hardware i owned that it was i was able to play a version of this game was um like the nintendo ds was it on maybe it was on the wii virtual console it probably was it's probably been on like the wii u virtual console but like it's been a long Mm -hmm. time since i've played it and i don't own any of those consoles anymore super mario sunshine like it's been at least 15 years since I've played this game. It's been at least 10 years since I played Galaxy. Like, the opportunity to, like, replay these games on modern hardware, I am just, like, com- so overjoyed, and I'm so excited that I get to do it in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, I've legit never played Sunshine. So uh, this this is very, very exciting for me as well. Mark, uh, you mentioned that this leaves the door open for us to find out something else about Nintendo's holiday season. Uh, we've got a pretty complete uh, picture of what September and October are going to look like um, between the, all of this stuff and um, Pikmin 3. Um but uh, so, what, what do you think? Do you think you know next Thursday after we post another episode that we'll get <laughs> that we'll get another uh, Nintendo Direct? I am kind. Of, look, I know that I was off the hype train, and I'm trying to stay off the hype train. Get back but on, I'm a get back bit on, on baby. The hype train. Like I think a Nintendo Direct is coming, and I think it's coming in the next couple of weeks because there's so much, seemingly so much third party stuff, and again, like that November, December, like Black Friday holiday game like what that's kind of like looming out there unanswered yeah and it feels like uh like nintendo is not going to just leave nintendo or november and december like vacant yeah i i i I agree with that 100 percent um I'm really looking forward to finding out what what the rest of the year is going to look like but honestly like the next couple of weeks are so exciting here that uh yeah I, I i think i think this is super rad uh and almost all of these announcements got me in some way um so yeah uh mark let's close this out Uh, I would like to hear how other people felt about this uh, direct, of course. Uh, so you can always email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com gmail. or tweet at us at Nincart Society. Thank you so much for joining us for a special bonus episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Uh, that was it. We've done it. We've uh, recapped the whole thing, uh, and it only took three times as long as <laughs> the, <laughs> the video itself. 
Uh, remember, if you enjoyed this episode, please uh, rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Please share on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you share stuff. Uh, if you were talking to someone uh, and they only paid attention to a couple of the announcements and you're like, hey, you should know about the other announcements. Or I don't know. Don't do it with that tone. That was condescending. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> Um, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nin Cart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. For my co host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying slap us on a disc and charge 60 bucks for it. Thanks for listening. Rachel, Oscar. Yeah, Claire? Claire? Do you love Disney movies? Uh Uh-huh. Have you seen them all? Not Not all all of them. them. What do you guys think if we watch them all in chronological order and then talk about them? Ooh. Oh, and what if we could talk about it with some of our favorite friends? (gasps) I love that. Yeah, what if we do it inside the Disney vault? You know, that's the name of our podcast, Inside the Disney Vault on Campfire Media. Yeah, check us out on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to yours. That's Inside the Disney Vault. Let's go. Campfire.